moments like that, being back playing for kind of more vulnerable populations. Again, there's just, it's something really special and you really feel like your, your music is, is touching people's hearts. Hi, Hannah, how are you doing today? Hi, Victoria. It's so good to be here today and to have a chat with you. Thanks so much for having me on. It's really, and really it's, fun. It, yeah, it's lovely to meet you and get to know about your work in my preparation leading up to the interview. So I can't wait to share um, all about you with our audience. Tell oh, us about you. your music journey. How did the harp came into your life? Yeah, so it's kind of, uh, well, it's a great story. And it's one my mom always likes to tell much to the embarrassment of you know, teenage Hannah once upon a time. But um, I asked to play the harp when I was two years old. Oh my goodness. When I was two years old. I know, isn't that sweet? But I, um, I like to think that I was just meant to play the harp because the first time I actually heard a harp was um, very soon after I was born because I was born at um, 30 weeks. And so I was quite premature. And I lived the first three months of my life in the neonatal intensive care unit in St. Paul Children's Hospital. And a harpist would come in to the NICU and play for all the babies. And she would actually sit right next to my bassinet. And I guess it was just the best thing. All the babies would quiet down, you know, and all their heart rates would lower. And um, yeah, it's really sweet. So I don't know how I got it in my head. It just was meant to be. And when I was two years old, out of the blue, I just asked my mom, I was like, mama, I want to play the harp. And she was, of course, like, how did this happen? Like, how do you know about a harp? You know? And so um, put it off because they didn't know where to find a harp teacher back then. And so I played piano and violin. And then when I was 10 years old, I got a month of harp lessons for Christmas. And that month kind of, you know, kept extending out and extending until, you know, I'm off to college to study music and still playing harp today. So. Wow, so you have been a long, friend. long time harp player. <laughs> long time, oh, not as long as that. My friend who started when she was three. Oh my but, goodness. Uh, <laughs> yes, wanting to play the harp my whole life. Uh, it's yeah. meant to be. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, and you mentioned that you have went on and study harp, and I understand that you went to Ireland to study Irish traditional music. How was that experience for you? Why do you choose Ireland? And is traditional music something that you're very um, passionate about? Yeah. Oh, so I have loved Irish music ever since I was 12. 12, yeah, in there I had this obsession like total obsession with Ireland and Irish music. And um, it probably started when I saw Celtic Woman back in the day when they had their like, when they were first really popular and they had their like PBS, you know, broadcasts. And um, what was the name of the harpist? Lisa Kelly would sing, play the harp and sing at the same time. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm taking harp lessons. I could do that. That's so cool. And looking back, it's, it's rather hokey and rather cheesy, but you know, it's what a friend of mine called like the gateway drug into Irish music, you know, like it's the, it was the, the gateway into kind of the, the broader tradition, real traditional Irish music. And um, yeah, that's how I got started on trad. And then when I was 16, I went to the um, the Center for Irish Music. I joined an ensemble. Um, the Center for Irish Music is a traditional music school here in St. Paul. And um, they run student programs and ensembles and they have hundreds of students now. And um, I started taking lessons there, began uh, competing with harp and I won the Midwest, the harp competition at the Midwest Black Hill few times and then I went to Ireland to compete and, and all these things which were really wonderful and which led to me eventually um, wanting to get my master's degree in Irish traditional music performance which I did during 2020 to 2021 uh, which is kind of wild <laughs> kind of absolutely wild um, I received a Fulbright grant to go to Ireland and to uh, get this Master's of Irish Traditional Music Performance from Maynooth University, which is just outside Dublin. And um, 
Yeah, it was kind of wild. I found out the day after Easter 2020, like in the middle of like staying home, everybody totally terrified, having no idea what's happening. I was, you know, in my house going, oh my gosh. And then I get this, you know, an email notification saying, congratulations, you have a full ride to go complete your research and study Irish music and going, is this even going to happen? Can I do this? You know? Um, and then it ended up being a take it or, or lose it kind of situation. Like they offered it to me and it was either go or decline. And I was like, well, I guess I'm moving to Ireland in the middle of a pandemic. And so I did, and uh, it was crazy, but also wonderful. So it's one of those experiences that I'll probably be talking about for the rest of my life. Yeah, I, I <laughs> bet. And I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, moving into Island, basically pandemic yeah. time. I wonder how that has maybe um, give you a different experience with mm. uh, the, your learning and the harp because that would not be, I imagine, uh, under normal circumstances, how someone would be studying music probably be quite different. I imagine the school probably yes. have a lot of po COVID protocols. You might not be able to do a lot of things in person. How was that yeah. like for you? And what were some of your biggest takeaway in your time in Ireland? Yeah, so I mean, it was kind of colored by the pandemic right from the start. You know, when I got to Ireland, I had quarantined for two weeks in my room, you know, all alone, like <laughs> with my heart. I, you know, spent a lot of time talking to friends and playing music. And if I'm honest, watching Netflix, you know, because I had nothing to do for two weeks. Um, and then the whole experience, I don't know how much people know about Ireland, especially during 2020, 2021, but they had um, the most severe COVID restrictions in the West. I don't think I'm wrong in, in quote, quoting that as the case. They were um, very significant. And so it was basically wave after wave of lockdown the whole year. And because of that, higher education was not allowed to function as normal. I was only allowed to go to one 45 minute tutorial a week. Mm. Everything else was online, um, which, you know, thinking about it, it's like, oh, that's so sad. You moved to Ireland only to do it online. And yes, that was the case. But at the same time, it forced me to sit in my room and practice for hours. Like it was literally the only thing I could do was to, um, sit in my room and practice. And it also enabled me to continue teaching because I teach um, both privately and through the Center for Irish Music that I mentioned earlier. So I kept my full studio of students, which is a little crazy. Like last year, I think I had about 20 students during the time I was away and a couple of classes. And I taught them all in the Minnesota time zone while completing my research, while practicing hours every day. So suffice to say, I didn't have time for a social life and um, wasn't able to have one like normal and to go out and to play music with other people. It just, it just wasn't legally possible, essentially. So um, it was a different experience, but it was really fruitful in a lot of ways and um, just a gift to be forced to just sit and work on my craft, you know, not to be too lofty about it, but just to sit and play harp and like really sit with the music day in and day out and have to be introspective and to um, really work extremely hard on the, the tunes I was learning and the pieces I was arranging. And um, it was really great musically, if not socially. <laughs> Yeah, I think there are um, times where we can definitely benefit from that. I call it very intimate time with our instrument where you basically yeah. it's just you and your instrument and nothing else. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you just have to figure it out. And what I've seen in your YouTube channel is that you um, recorded the very set while you were in Ireland, if I read the caption properly. Yeah. And it is yes. one of the tracks that is uh, going to be in your upcoming album. Did you write that when you were in Ireland? Was that part of your um, <laughs> lockdown activity? <laughs> yes. So um, going into the program, um, me and the other 
students in my cohort, we were supposed to have um, a final performance at the end of the year. That's That was kind of the capstone. We all wrote a thesis and we also were supposed to have a final performance of tunes that we chose and arranged for it. But um, due to COVID, it was pretty obvious by the end of the fall term that spring summer performances were, were going to have to be canceled. And so instead of the in-person performance that we were all really looking forward to doing. We were um, instead told that we would be doing a recording project instead. So the university paid for an engineer and the studio time and we individually went um, into the studio and basically planned, arranged, and then recorded um, about two, not quite two thirds of an album. It was seven tracks seven tracks of an album and we had to um, come up with like the premise of the album like we had to um, have some sort of theme as well as um, do all the arranging and tune picking and all of that ourselves so that's that that was over half of the album Paul Gatehouse that is coming out in a couple months hopefully that's the plan so Tell us about this album and how does the music in this one differ from your first album, um, Song of the Heart? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So I recorded Arm Nekritja, or Song of the Heart, um, in 2018. And that was kind of a, a long labor of love. It's 12 songs in the Irish language accompanied on harp. Me, obviously, doing the singing and the accompanying. And that kind of came out. I spent... Um, three summers studying the Irish language in the Gaeltacht, which is the Irish language speaking part of Ireland. I have a real passion for the Irish language as well as the music and the way they're kind of intertwined. And so um, I actually got my first Fulbright to go study the Irish language in the Gaeltacht in um, 20, uh, 2017. 2017. <laughs> that was it. And then I went back in summer 2018 and 2019 to study some more because I just couldn't stay away. I just That's had such a great time. At, um, it just Gale is the name of the Irish language college in Donegal. And um, I had this real vision of doing the first album, which was all these 12 songs in Irish language, uh, most of which I had learned from Dahi Sproul, who's a great Irish guitarist and singer and academic and all these things. And he's a real dear friend and mentor figure in my life. And I um, arranged and recorded those for that album along with some guest musicians from friends of mine here in town. So um, that was the first album. And then because all those um, all the tracks on that album were songs accompanied by the harp. I really, part of my master's degree, like vision for my master's degree project was to work on tune playing more. I, I obviously do play a lot of tunes and that kind of thing, but I really wanted to focus on, um, I guess, improving. We all want to improve, right? Like I wanted to be a better tune player. I wanted to um, have good rhythm and groove and especially focus on accompanying tunes like writing and arranging my own um, tune left hands instead of just learning them from other people and um which I have done but that whole year doing the MA was really me focusing on that um but I still had a real love for singing and accompanying myself on the harp and so the new album is a mixture of sets of tunes as well as um uh Five, five of the tracks are me singing with um, harp accompaniment. And one of the tracks is a tune I composed last year. And um, that's the, the title track of the tunes, Hallgate House. It's a little waltz that I composed for dear friends of mine during my year in Ireland. That's lovely. And have you always wanted to sing and play the harp together? Has that always been something you wanted to do? Yeah, yeah. It's always, I've always loved singing and I've always loved playing the harp and just combining the two is just um, such a pleasure. And it kind of stems back to the whole Celtic woman thing. When I saw Lisa Kelly singing and playing, um, you know, I cringe a little bit now, but that was really the root of my inspiration for singing and playing myself. I went home and, you know, 
I was probably about 14 and I sat down and I just remember how difficult it was to sing and try and play <laughs> at the same time. But I kept at it and kept um, working really hard and trying to um, come up with different ways of accompaniment and, and really studying um, the Shanoff style singing um, from when I was a teenager. Of, um, really studying the song both in English and in the Irish language. Your singing is beautiful. I watched the video you filmed in a beautiful ruin singing Silent Night uh, oh. in Ireland. And I feel like the harp and voice is such a natural combination. It, it mm -hmm. goes so well together and it's so fun. On the other hand, I, I agree with you. It's hard. Like it's hard enough to try to play the harp without making a mistake, let alone trying to play and saying, what are some of your tips uh, beyond really like practicing it a lot? Is, is there any other advice or suggestions you would have for those who want to start uh, playing the harp and sing at the same time? Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, I feel like it's kind of when you're learning a right hand and the left hand when you're playing the harp, you know how you really have to hold in on each of them individually before you can put them together um, to really succeed in, well, just in playing the harp. It's kind of the same with singing and playing. Like, it's good to isolate both of them and really like internalize the song you're trying to sing and really know what you're going to play while you accompany yourself because you're really kind of it's kind of like the ultimate multitasking right because you're playing not only just your right hand but your left hand and you're singing and maybe you're reading music at the same time on this like a chord chart so um I'm a huge fan and when I teach I always tell my students like break it down take it one thing at a time, like eat an elephant one bite at a time and then put it together. Because if you really know each individual part, then putting it together isn't such a frustrating process. Because I think a lot of people just want to dive right in, you know, because you, you feel so excited. And I totally understand that. But I just um, hugely encourage people to just take one thing at a time and then try and put them together and take it slowly and just step by step. Don't jump. Um, try to jump to Z before you've gone through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know? So. Yeah, I feel like breaking it down uh, is always a good way to to start because we can overwhelm ourselves quite easily. I yes. remember my kids when they start learning the harp, if you try to get them to play two hands together, it, like yeah. that was a very difficult thing to to do. They were doing mm -hmm. head separate for a while. Now, I do want to talk to you a little bit about teaching because I know you teach a lot. Um, the harp has become quite popular these days. There are more people um, wanting to learn the harp. And we always wonder about, you know, our teachers and what is their style of teaching? How do we find a teacher? What are some of your best experience in sort of working with students? And what are some of your teaching philosophy? How do you approach teaching harps? Uh, and if someone is interested in working with you as a harp teacher, what are the things that you would tell your prospective student about yourself as a harp teacher? Yeah, that's great. Um, oh, where to start? As far as me as a teacher, like I see 
my role as um, it's a little bit different between children and adults. Let's just use adults as an example, because probably most people watching this video are adults interested in playing the harp. But with adults, I really see myself as like chief, you know, cheerleader. And I am here to encourage you in your music and to give you solid technique that will help you succeed playing whatever kind of music you're interested in. So I, um, I teach kind of in two different veins. There's like classical music, Hannah. I'm, you know, I have a classical music background and classically trained and I love teaching classical music and standard kind of folk harp and pedal harp repertoire. And then I also teach traditional Irish music, which is a little bit different because it's an oral tradition. And so um, I mostly teach by ear when I'm teaching Irish music. And that's kind of a whole another ball game in and of itself, like no music um, or very little music and um, learning kind of back and forth. And it's extremely interactive in that sense. But as far as um, picking up the harp as an adult, me as someone who has played music since I was a small child and the harp since I was 10, I have such respect for adults who choose to learn the harp as a grown up, you know? Like it's so intimidating to pick up an instrument, especially the harp, which is an extremely difficult instrument, um, to pick up something entirely new and to be a beginner as an adult is a really, um, kind of a courageous thing because, you know, now being a grown up myself, you know, like you get comfortable in the things you do and, you know, you have confidence in your job and, and what you're used to doing and you're good at and the hobbies you've maybe had for a long time. So picking up a new hobby is um, challenging because suddenly you're, you're back to square one and it takes humility and courage to um, try something new. And so, yeah, I just have great respect, especially for my students who have been taking lessons for years from me and they just keep plodding along and they're achieving their goals, you know, some, some faster than others, but they're just being, doing that like faithful step-by-step -step showing up, you know, to their heart practice most days. And um, yeah, it's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. And I'm incredibly proud of my adult students. But me as a teacher, like I'm here to help you love the harp, you know, like my my goal is to make sure that this instrument that you're picking up as a beginner as a 40, 50, 60, 70 year old is something you can hold on to for the rest of your life and enjoy and bring pleasure and joy to the people around you, whether it's, you know playing Silent Night at your family Christmas party or, you know, going to the nursing home where your elderly parents are, you know, anything, anything like that. Yeah, music is just a wonderful thing and it should be for life. And harp is um, a great way to keep music in your life. I really resonate with what you said about being the cheerleader. That is personally my biggest uh... So draw to having a teacher who can just stay with yeah. me for a long time and be that person mm -hmm. to be able to help me make progress in my own way, because every student is different yeah. too, right? So mm -hmm. having a teacher who can guide you along your own path, I think it's a yeah. wonderful thing. Yeah, and I think everybody has, they have their own, their own goals for their music. I have a couple adult students who are like real high achievers. Like they really, they want to be great musicians. And I am here for that. I will give you the technique and the repertoire and I will, I will be there to help you achieve whatever you want to, you know, whatever level you want to get to. Like I am, I'm here for that. But if you just, you know, if you just want to play harp and show up to lessons every week and have a chat with me and learn new songs and that brings you enjoyment and like adds to your life. Well, I'm, I'm so happy for that as well. Cause I think sometimes people can get really wrapped up in making sure that people um, really achieve, you know, and some people are just more laid back and they're, they're happy to show up to lessons every week and, and just kind of plod along. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing. As it well. is. That's because, me. Like I totally take yeah. that approach. I just want a yeah. weekly routine where I'm basically setting aside time for myself to exactly bond with the heart for like a better term yeah. and having that guidance from someone. And I think that's a, a good way to 
approach a hobby as an adult because we already have enough obligations in our life we don't necessarily right. need to you know go exactly. oh it's like i'm gonna be a professional exactly so, kind of yeah. like going to the gym or something you know like, so you, like the whole point is that you go you know it's enriching and healthy um just showing up week to week and um getting what you need out of it so yeah, yeah. Those are some of my thoughts on teaching. I could probably ramble for a long time, but um, yeah, teaching is, is one of the most um, like personally fulfilling aspects of my job. I would say it's really um, something I love and uh, it's great because I get to teach for my whole life and, and hopefully all my students get to learn. So yeah, and it really helps uh, spread the love of harp uh, and help make the instrument more popular. It's great yeah. to see. Everybody needs to play harp. Maybe not everybody, but lots of people. Should Close play to everybody. <laughs> Close. Close. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. that's it. Or at least they should all play an instrument. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. And I want to circle back to, you know, about achieving and go. And mm -hmm. I think being a full time musician is such a tough job. And you are, um, I consider one of the younger generation of sort of full time mm -hmm. musician. And yeah. I can only imagine how much work and sweat and tears that you have to put into in order to craft out a path for yourself. What is it like yeah. for you to be in this field? And what are some of the challenges that you have come across so far? And what are some of the, the memorable moments you have in your career that you think, you know what, this is what makes it all worth, worth it for me? <laughs> oh, that is such a huge question, Victoria. I will try and answer it best I can. Um, I would say that being a professional musician is far more difficult than I, you know, than like 18 year old me thought when I was going off to music school, you know, I kind of thought it would just be playing music and getting paid for it all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a dream, there's right? <laughs> that, there's some of that. You don't always get paid for it, but like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you hope, right? Um, and, you know, I kind of went off to music school rather starry eyed and I just I just loved sitting and practicing my instrument all the time. And I got out of music school and went, oh, I like I need to make a living at this now. Like, this is what I want to do. So uh, how do I do that again? I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. That kind of like real world. Like, oh, I have bills. Oh, how am I going to like make a, a steady income doing this. And uh, I am personally just so grateful for the mentorship and guidance from professional musicians in my life who took time out of their busy schedules and family lives and like really guided me in the process of both learning how to teach and also um, <laughs> like learning how to function as a musician practically because there are so many things that just never see the light of day in at least in the music school I went to and I, I hear this commonly from many friends who are professional musicians like you don't you maybe have like one class that's kind of like practical musician class but I didn't have like I think back I'm like oh having a grant writing class would have been so helpful you know I've personally written a lot of grants over the past six, eight years. And, um, you know, learning how to find the, the funding that's out there for professional musicians. I'm very, very fortunate to live in Minnesota and we have a lot of arts funding for um, arts organizations and individual musicians. And I've been really blessed to get several grants from the Minnesota Arts Board and uh, different, you know, adjunct uh, boards out of that here in Minnesota. I'm so thankful for the friends who took the time to like read over the early grants that I wrote and like help me learn how to find this funding and um, like how to write for a grant, you know, because it's kind of a skill set in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's been a real challenge, like learning how to find funding and then just, you know, writing contracts what else, you know, like administration, like being your own administrator, you know, you have the, you start having those nightmares about like writing, putting the gig in your, 
calendar like on the wrong day or at the wrong time. Thankfully, that's only happened to me once and they were very understanding and it was a nursing home. So <laughs> it was pretty low stakes. It wasn't somebody's wedding ceremony or anything like that. Um, so I would say those are, are some of the challenges to um, learning how to be a professional musician or kind of um, everything but playing your instrument. I would say that playing playing the harp is probably about 20% of what I do. You know, a lot of the other things are um, learned skills and um, other various aspects of being a musician that aren't sitting down and, and performing for people. Yeah. And it's been uh, kind of a learning on the job sort of process. And it's been great. It's everything I wanted it to be. And, you know, it's just like any job where some days you're like, oh, I got to write all those emails. Oh, I got to write up that contract. Oh, I need to like post that, that video online. Or, oh, I need to schedule out my social media posts. You know, it's, it's all these things that are um, the same, just have a harp twist on it that you could do in a lot of other jobs. And um, it's great. Like, I just, I love it. And I'm just thankful to have figured it out with the help of some really wonderful people. Yeah. And I try to say this every time the opportunity arrives. I feel like there is a lot of work that goes behind the scene that are not immediate obvious to the people who consume music, right? On the other end yeah. of the, the, the product. And mm -hmm. I always encourage people to pay for music and, and appreciate like how little actually <laughs> your musicians are charging us for all the work that you have to put in to get something together. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that is something that I, I want my kids to understand too, because again, it's so easy for us to forget all the things that happens behind the scene to make something mm -hmm. happen. And when you look at all the work that one has to put in to even just put together an album. It's it's a huge yeah. amount of work. So I really appreciate that. And yes. I'm going and I, I've made a point to uh, buy an album from my guests every time um, I can. Yeah. And I'm definitely gonna be adding your album to my list of purchase when it comes out. Yeah. What about some of the um, happy moments, things that makes you feel really fulfilled about being in your career? Is there anything that really stood out for you? Yeah. Um. You know, there's always great moments, like when I got to film the, the music videos on YouTube in Ireland, you know, and I'm sitting in the ruins of Inch Abbey in Countdown, you know, making a music video. And it's just one of those that pinch me sort of moments. You know, moments like that are wonderful. They're also kind of few and far between in some ways. You know, sometimes it's just the small things. Like I play regularly at several nursing homes here in St. Paul. And, um, you know, you have these these elderly people who have lived such long, full lives doing things you don't even know about. And I think it's really easy to, you know, overlook people who don't look like much anymore and not remember the, the full lives and the things they've experienced. You know, I'll have these elderly people come up to me at the nursing home and they'll be, you know, it'll be like an older gentleman in a wheelchair and he'll have tears in his eyes. And he's like, that is the most beautiful music I've heard and, you know, so long. And then you have other elder, like this little old lady come up to me and like, tell me about how she played violin in Carnegie Hall when she was in her thirties and just realizing like, wow, like these, we're all going to be one of these people someday, hopefully, you know, and, um, yeah, it's, it's especially this winter, like moments like that, being back playing for kind of more vulnerable populations. Again, there's just, it's something really special and you really feel like your your music is, is touching people's hearts and lives. It's like a full circle moment for you because you started with harp in the NICU, someone yeah. playing to you and now you're yeah. on the other end there. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. things like that. And then um, I had a student do really well and like win the harp competition at Midwest Flock Hill this uh, the under 18 competition which is quite difficult and he won first place this year and he you know just things like that where I just I feel so proud and it's another kind of full circle moment because I was there too you know like over a decade ago and just to have a student doing that themselves now like it's just like oh like like music it, it makes a difference in people's lives and um as far as um 
the NICU is concerned and then playing for elderly people. So a fun story that people might enjoy. When I was 14, my harp teacher moved back to California where she was from and I had to find a new harp teacher. And so I started taking lessons from a lady named Kathy Victorson here in the St. Paul area. And um, one of the first lessons, my mom, you know, was just chit-chatting with her. I had my lesson. I was like, okay, mom, let's go, you know, teenage Hannah. And um, my mom was telling her the story about me being in the NICU and all these things. And Kathy was like, wait a second. I used to go play. Was that St. Paul Children's? I used to go play there. And my mom was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, you know, this year, that month. And Kathy was like, wait a second, was she in a little red? Did she have red hair as a child? And um, it turns out that my new harp teacher had been the harpist who came into the NICU to play for me. And she remembered me because she was pregnant with her second child at the time and would sit next to the harp and she was pregnant and she was playing and she'd you know, look over and there was this little redheaded baby, which you don't see all the time. And um, she was my um, harp and pedal harp instructor all through university. So, yeah, it's so special. special. Mm -hmm. Very, special. Yeah, Very special. I love it. And but you're right. Like I feel like those little things, right, are the things that fills your day and adds up uh, and yeah. make you feel happy about what you do. Yeah. And on top of all the other wonderful things that you're doing, you are working with music makers, and I'm really enjoying some of the social media <laughs> posts that you're making. Thank you. And in my conversation with Jacob, it looks like you have yeah. also been um, sort of, I, I wouldn't say in contact, but music maker and you has a, it go back a long way. Let's just put yeah. it that way. We have history. We have history. That's what <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and how is it like for yeah. you as a professional harpist to work for a harp maker? I would feel like that would be a, a dream come true for me, or at least that would be something I really <laughs> enjoy uh, being able to see how yeah. you know, harps be yeah. made. What's that like for you working for them? Oh, uh, you know, Victoria, it's wonderful. It's a dream. It's a dream I never dreamt, but now that I have it, it's just absolutely wonderful I never I never even thought about working for music makers and they they um, approached me um, last fall when I moved back to Minnesota after doing my degree in Ireland and living over there um, I moved back and it was kind of like finding my feet kind of like after any major change or move you're just kind of like okay what am I doing now you know and I get an email and um, I go in and chat with Jake and Matt and they're like hey like what do you think? Like, we're looking for someone to, to run our social media and make content and basically be our staff harpist. And I was like, well, that sounds ideal. <laughs> like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's give it a try. And um, it's just been wonderful. I've known those guys for a long time and Jerry Brown too, who was the original owner. But um, Jake actually built this harp for me. It's a the Voyager model. And this was my first harp that I bought myself. Mm -hmm. And I bought it when I was a teenager. And um, it's very special. It's it's rather beat up. It's, it's seen a lot of use um, through the years. And um, yeah, Jake built that one before um, he owned the company, actually. Yeah, I've known them and they've been so supportive and they've really been so great with my students. And it's just been a really lovely relationship that has bloomed over the years and now taken on this new form where I get to make social media content and marketing materials and, and um, just help them out. So I think it's, it's really wonderful for me <laughs> to have such a, a great um, steady kind of side hustle that's not really a side hustle because it's, it's hard, it's all hard. One of my dearest friends, after I got the job, she was like, Hannah, look at you. You're a fully employed artist. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, I am. Isn't that a nice thought? Like, <laughs> I might have four jobs, but hey, I'm fully employed. <laughs> and it's, it's so. so great, too, to be um, able to see a harp company put out such uh, fun ways of marketing their instrument yeah. um i i still remember when i was um buying a harp 
and I was looking around the company that stood out for me are the ones that put out a lot of information about the product. Well, this is how we consume information these days, right? We want to know what we're getting ourselves into. So they have a really good website already that is very informative. And then when I look at, um, you know, the social media information and whatnot, it just helped me be, uh, get a bigger understanding in what yeah. they're offering. And I have never actually seen any of play any of the instrument before I brought them. I all, I bought them all sight and seen, <laughs> including um, the Cheyenne. And it, okay. it is through the contents that you and, you know, the other colleagues in Music Maker that I've created mm -hmm. that convinced me that, yeah, I'll give this a shot. I think <laughs> I, I think I can try this. So I, I think it will be all right. So it's really oh, wonderful to see that. And lovely. it's lovely to see a harpist working for them as well. Because uh, yeah. Jacob told me that it was so nice to be able to just grab hand and say, hey, like, we want to record something. We need a professional <laughs> harpist. Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> do it it's, it's, it's handy for both of us it's handy yeah. for both of us yeah it's That's great awesome. it's really great and they make beautiful hearts they really do Somerset this year with uh, Music yes. Maker. What yes, are you going to do there? Are we going to see you doing anything interesting in there? Are you going to tell us about your album in person if, <laughs> if we're coming to the festival? I might actually have some copies. So I actually just okayed the, the graphic design this morning, which very is exciting. really exciting. It's been a very long process to get there and the recordings are all done. So it's going off to the printers tomorrow or Monday. We'll see. Very soon. You're on the home stretch. Um, I know. Oh, I, I recorded the, the first chunk of it over a year ago now. And I finished um, the the last like five tracks kind of gradually this spring because Omicron kind of pushed things out from, you know, winter completion time to spring to early summer. So now it's just kind of like, whew, I'm done. Like I'm ready to like just hand it to people and have them listen to it and, and be done with um, that part of the process as enjoyable as it is. It's still a lot of work. It is. <laughs> um, yes, I'll be at Somerset. I will be in the heart booth. So come say hi. And I'm actually thrilled. It's um, Jake, the owner, me, and then my dear friend, Stephanie Clausen, who's also a professional harpist here in town. And we've been dear friends since back in the day when we both were harp players at the Minnesota Renaissance Festival, mm -hmm. where I started playing when I was a teenager. It's a very like <laughs> almost decade long chapter of my life that is probably closed now. I, I've probably moved on to other things since then, but um, Yes, so she's a very dear friend of mine, not just professionally, but in real life. And she's coming along, so we will be one of the one of the most qualified heart booths, anyway. <laughs> at Somerset, don't quote me. There might be some other ones who have some great heart players who are staffing them too. But um, we're just we're excited to meet people and um, to have a good time because both of us have always wanted to go, but it's always just kind of been New Jersey's pretty far away from Minnesota and money you know all those things budget hasn't quite allowed for it yet so we're excited come say hi and um we'd love to talk to you about music makers or ourselves anything lovely yeah should be fun yes where can we find your music and also stay in touch with all the different things that you're doing yeah so um you can find my music at my website hannahflowersharp.com um, you can also find it on any streaming platform, including, um, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, CD Baby, all those things. And um, I'll be having a CD release concert for the new album in September, because summer is kind of a dicey time to, to have a concert because um, people are busy and on vacation. So right after school goes back in session, September 16th, I'll be having a concert at the Celtic Junction Arts Center if you're local want to come it should be a great time 
but um, if your followers are interested, they can also follow me on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, all those things. So TikTok, yeah, TikTok sort of, yes. Sort of. I'm, I might be young, but I feel a bit old for TikTok. I am I'm definitely too old for TikTok. <laughs> I'm a millennial, so like, I'm the Instagram. So I'm the yeah, Instagram, Instagram people. Lovely. It's nice and comfortable, right? It is nice and comfortable. <laughs> I am looking forward to listening to your music. Oh, I was having so much fun just watching the fairy set. You look so happy playing oh, your harp. The music sound wonderful. I just really love the cheery undertone in that uh, particular yeah. piece. And I really enjoy your singing too. So I'm looking forward to hear the full album. And are we going to be able to um, buy it from your website when it's released? Yes, you can if you're, you know, I'm still one to print CDs, so there will be CDs for sale, as well as the streaming things, and if, um, yeah, CDs are always a great way to support any local artist you know of. I agree. Because um, streaming is, you know, kind of a pittance, but we all kind of know that. Um, so yes, you can buy the CDs off my website, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's where it's at. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoy getting to know you and your work. And I'm so excited for your upcoming album. Good luck and yeah. have lots of fun in Somerset. And yes. I cannot go in person, but I'm hoping one of those years down the road, you'll be able yes. to go again with Jake and then I'll be yeah. there and then we'll be able to yeah. listen to you yeah, play in reunion. person. <laughs> yes, it would be lovely. That would be wonderful. That yes. would be wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, Victoria. It's been really a joy chatting with you and um yeah thanks for having me i really appreciate everything you're doing for the harp world and keep it up there's so many great players out there and, and so many different conversations to have absolutely and i definitely feel like everyone that i've talked to has something unique to offer and i'm very grateful for the opportunity to to discover them and share what they're doing with everyone thank you so much yeah, it's wonderful thank you victoria Bye.